When these newborn babies cry, when they squirm in their cots, that's their bodies calling out for more opioids. That's heroin and drugs like it. Those piercing sounds of withdrawal are the only sounds on this specialist ward. Noise and bright light cause these babies pain. They begin to feel it the moment the umbilical cord is cut. Caitlin was born seven weeks ago as an addict. When Jessica got pregnant, she couldn't get clean. She carried on taking opiate pills she'd been abusing for years. Because some people might say, why don't you, you know, why don't you just stop? What, what do they not understand? It's not that simple, is it? Uh, being sick and trying to raise kids, or being sick and trying to go to work, or being sick and just trying to have a relationship with somebody. When you say sick, you mean dope sick? Yes. Withdrawals? <laughs> you just don't want, you don't want to be in the world. You don't want to be, you don't want life, I guess. Jessica told me in her small hometown in Kentucky, she barely knows anyone who isn't addicted. She wants to try again, she said, to give up. You're looking into Caitlin's eyes. What do you hope for her? I hope she grows up and does something with her life and doesn't go down the same road I did. I asked Darlene what it's like caring for a baby withdrawing. She's fostered 20 through those first weeks when they shake and they cry uncontrollably. Isn't that hard for you to hear? Oh, definitely. They're, they're desperate, desperate, painful. I, I can't describe it. They're, yes, it, it really breaks your heart. It's actually painful for you to touch them. I mean, can't it, be it, touched. it hurts them they to can't actually be, be touched. They can't be cuddled. Well, they can, but they're, it's painful to them. And last year, one in every 10 new babies at this hospital was born into this new American addiction. Huntington's on the banks of the Ohio River, and it's been overwhelmed. Deaths from opiates in this part of America went up 500% in a decade. But the crumpling of these communities started not on street corners, but in doctor's surgeries. For years, strong opiate painkillers were overprescribed. Millions got addicted, many moved on to heroin. So when parents disappear into addiction, what happens to the children? This is Micaiah with her two boys, Reed and Lane. Today, they hold on to their grandparents very tightly. Their mother, Micaia, died from a heroin overdose last summer. She had started with painkillers from a doctor when she was 15 for a back injury. I had actually planned her funeral out in my head to a point. Yeah. That's an extraordinary thing for a mum to do. It's the reality, though. Yeah. Sorry, it's hard to talk about sometimes. Michelle and Chuck are now raising their grandchildren themselves. They're so young and yeah. they'll never have their mom, ever. And that was the most heart-wrenching um, thing I've ever gone through. When you had to tell them? Tell them and then... Tell them and then at the funeral home. Chuck told me that in the funeral home, Micaiah's younger son wanted to say goodbye. Yeah. And then he jumped down and he put her, his arms around her. And not just for a second. Um, tears you up that she's gone, that these boys will never see their mother again. I can't imagine that. The US government is now spending money trying to slow this epidemic down. In some parts of America, there's no question it's come too late. But can this wealthiest of countries stop its drugs dragging under another generation.